In 2015, Pope Francis issued his encyclical Laudato Si, which was hailed by many, especially those on the left who are pushing an eco-theology, environmentalism. And today we're going to look at something that's even more sinister, and that is the Catholic Church, well, not the Catholic Church, but the Vatican, the Pope's involvement in this thing called the 2030 Plan, which is uh, it's pretty frightening. And uh, Tim Gordon's with me today. He's done a lot of research on it. We're going to discuss it. So, Tim, how are you? I'm, I'm doing well. A Good. little spooked, but, but, but well. So, um, you know, Pope Francis has talked about, I'm just going to give a quote here from Laudato C. He says that for a correct transition to a sustainable future, it is necessary to recognize one's own mistakes, sins, vices, or negligence, to repent of heart, to change from within, to be reconciled with others, with creation, and with the creator. So we're called not to be reconciled just with other people and God himself, but with creation itself, according to the 2015 Laudato C. Tell us more about how this encyclical, Laudato C, which is on basically reconciling with the creation, relates to this new 2030 agenda. It's a good question. Pope Francis, when he was addressing the the bishops at this meeting on last Friday, I guess, uh, almost a week ago now, he calls the achievement of these sustainable development goals, uh, we'll, we'll call them SDGs here, SDG. creepy, SDG. SDG. creepy, creepy stuff. Um, we're going to talk about them a little specifically. He calls this the affirmation of our, quote, deepest religious principles, which is, which is staggering, hmm. one, when you hear what the SDGs comprise, two, when you consider that he also calls them fitting with what he says about religion, a vocation, Mm. you know, Mm. a vocation. And these are all natural Like I was called to the priesthood. She was called to really, I was called to recycling. Right. Exactly. I was, (laughs) (laughs) what's your vocation? I feel, yeah, Yeah, my, my vocation is, is keeping it, keeping, keeping stuff fresh, the recycling way. But I mean, so no, I mean, this is so much more serious than even that, because as you brought up Laudato C, Taylor, uh, in one of in two of our recent videos, and I hadn't thought about it in that long since I I'd, I'd written articles on it back at the time, and then everyone forgot about it because yeah. look at all the water under the bridge. Well, we had brought it we, when we were talking about Amoris Laetitia. Mm-hmm. We we said, hey, everybody's talking about Amoris, but Laudato got forgotten. And right. was and I asked the question. It's kind of rhetorical, but is this plan like does does Amoris Laetitia go with Laudato C? Are they complementary? And and I think they are. And I think what you're going to share today shows that they are because the eco theology is really a backdoor way in saying, well, we in the medieval time contraception was a mortal sin, but now the planet's overcrowded and we're destroying the planet, so now we have to contracept because of a new a new uh, circumstance, situation ethics. That's right. That's that's exactly right. Um, it it's creepier than Laudato Si in, in the the capacity that you just named. I mean, I'm not, I'm not joking. People get used to us being maybe slightly exaggerative or joking, particularly at the beginning and ends of shows, and then we get into specifics. Let me say, on behalf of these, I spent much of the night last night with these. The, it's called the 2030 Agenda, um, written directly by a subcommittee of the UN. It was written in September of 2015. It is genuinely spooky stuff. And, and this is sort of becoming a new interest of mine, The how these SDGs will be fleshed out. Creepy Masonic language in the, the preface. I'll, I'll read you some of the, the, the preamble. But it it is like reading the Alta Vendita in many ways. Right. Uh, creepy universalist globalist language that is not it's not the usual boilerplate of subcommittees. There's there's a lot of purely Masonic stuff in here, and it's it's genuinely frightening. Um, you know, we we normally think of the the UN being just this idiotic 
body that ought to be dissolved tinkering around in New York City. Well, and I've always, you know, was kind of raised making fun of it by my, the elders of my family who, who knew how silly globalism is. But it's more of a threat now in the post-Obama world, in the post, and, and in the Francis pontificate. But the, the key thing, I, I think the main idea for Catholics to take away is it's not my idea. It's actually the way that this came to me. Um, the way I realized yesterday how creepy this is is by a, a podcaster named uh, Padre Peregrino, who I, I sometimes listen to um, and admire some of the things he says. He pointed out that in the Catholic News Agency article, which most of us read on Friday, I, I saw it and didn't think much of it. CNA leaves out decidedly when it's going through the, the SDGs. Mm -hmm. They involve, more or less directly, abortion, homosexual rights, and population control. Mm. And, and the CNA article, when you read it through with that in the front of your mind, it gets even creepier because it's like the, the, the Pope is directly linking his goals in the Curia with one of his past uh, encyclicals to the UN's goals here. And then there are already websites out there that are being partisan in support of this by, by covering for it. It's, it's, it's creepy, scary. What, when was this written? 2015? Yes. Yeah, September, late September of 2015. So, I mean, is this coordinated because Laudato Si by Pope Francis was written May 2015. That's so right. So this is written after. Right. And, uh, you know, it's it's strange because as far as I know, Bergoglio has no history in eco-theology or environmentalism. He becomes Pope and two years in, he's got this this tome on how Catholics need to be good to the earth. Right. Well, well, bear in mind what we said about Laudato Si. He was consulting all sorts of Soros uh, people on this, namely yes. Jeffrey Sachs, who was yeah. the big consultant. The population control abortion uh, specialist that works for well, George Soros and is, is, is a noted, I think, atheist. And he was he was a huge part of La Dottosi, which drew some criticism at the time back back in the sort of first phase of the the uh, the Francis papacy. So yeah, this this I mean when we say George Soros, you think think basically Freemasonic. I mean the guy's got more money than yeah. than, than Croesus, and he, I mean. No one knows exactly what his affiliations are, but it's globalist, population control, um, universalist agenda. Right. It's brotherhood it's, of man. It is brotherhood of man. That that's yeah, secular yeah. humanism. Brotherhood of man. Can I say a word on the Freemasonic? Because a lot of people hear that and they're like, oh, tin foil hat, conspiracy theory. Uh, they don't know what it is. So Freemasonry really just refers to secret societies that emerged in the 1700s, and they emerged because the Protestant Reformation, which happened in 1517, it left this huge vacuum in Europe and in the West. It used to be Christendom was united in Catholicism under the Pope. Once you right. just obliterate that with Martin Luther and Sola Scriptura, there is no unifying organism for the peoples of the world. So Freemasonry creates these secret societies. It's really a new visible church, but it's an anti-church to unite Europe and the West. So you see this emerging in the 1700s and they choose for their theology alchemy. This medieval right. quest for alchemy. What is alchemy? It's turning lead into gold. It's taking something in nature and trying to make it better, right? Worth more. And alchemy, if you think about it, I write this in my, my book that's coming out on the infiltration of the Catholic Church, because I have to explain Freemasonry. How do you explain this to you know, just your everyday Joe? 
alchemy is, is just take, taking the lead and the gold. That's what Satan did. He said, I don't want to receive the grace of God. I want to take my own nature and exalt it to be God. Right. Right. So alchemy becomes the parable of satanic quests. We don't need God. We don't need grace. We don't need the Eucharist. We don't need Jesus. We can take our own human nature and with that human nature transcend and become God's ourself. Yeah, the perfection of nature, not through grace, but precisely, which is alchemy. Nature. It is not alchemy. It's, perfection of nature through nature. Yeah, yeah. So th- that's why all the 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 um, you know the Rosy Cross and the and the Freemasonic cults and all that they all have this this goal of alchemy, and what they focus on ultimately is turning God, turning humans into God, and so they're pantheistic brotherhood of man. Right rationalism, not faith, but the mind, the mind alone. All of these things are the quest of the Freemasonic. So when you're Freemasonic, don't think conspiracy theory and don't think just a secret sect or Illuminati. Think about what they're teaching. And when you realize what the Freemasons were teaching, which is really the French Revolution, then when you hear cardinals and popes talking like that, you realize, oh, they're just regurgitating what the French Revolution said, they're just putting a little Catholic veneer over the top. Right. And this, exactly. this population control and this loving the earth, earth as our, as a, a spiritual reality, which it's not, is also Freemasonic. Well, and if, and if furthermore, I, I want to say something else because I just looked at your shirt and I was, as, as I was listening to you, uh, T and T, just recognized what the top of your shirt was. Yeah, look at that, Freemasons. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's Look at the Latin. Here it is. Right. Ferum, as iron sharpens iron. Ferum, Pharaoh. Ching, ching. Ex- Exequatur. Yeah, think about that. Like, you pray, pray, in, pray in Latin, like bas root, and yeah, because mm-hmm. it, it, it makes the devil mad and, and it makes the, makes the Freemasons because mad. They don't want to speak in Latin because it's Roman. It's Romish. Uh, Bill, Bill Cutting says, the butcher. Romish papery think okay so if, if all that still sounds far flung to folks out there just listen to re- recalling calling in mind Taylor's description here and sit there and just drink this in this part of the preamble to this thing okay and and you you tell me what's far flung right Uh, I'm not reading the whole preamble. It's not that long. I probably could, but these are selected parts. All all countries and all stakeholders acting in collaborative partnership will will implement this plan. We are resolved to free the human race from the tyranny of poverty and want and to heal and secure our planet. To secure our planet, that's that's a that's a creepy way of putting it, right? I mean, you, you can't secure the planet without control. We are determined to take the bold and transformative steps which are urgently needed to shift the world onto a sustainable and resilient path. That just sounds like recycling stuff. As we embark on this collective journey, we pledge that no one will be left behind. The 17 sustainable development goals and 169 targets, which we are announcing today, demonstrate the scale and ambition of this, quote, New universal agenda. The A is capitalized in agenda, which you do in legal documents. But new universal agenda, which they, they keep referring to the right. universalism and the global, it is just, it's like reading the ultimate data. They seek to build on the Millennium Development Goals, and which which are from 2005 in a, in a UN thing. They're, they're trying to beef them up and complete what they did not achieve. They seek to realize the human rights of all and to achieve gender equality and the empowerment of all women and girls. They're mm. integrated and divisible, indivisible and, and balanced the three dimensions of uh, sustainable development, economic, social, and environmental. Uh, they, they will be achieved by 2030. Um, and then there are these five creepy Ps in the scope, people, planet, prosperity, peace, and partnership. I, I don't know why the five P is, but that that's just weird. The first one, people, says, we are determined to end poverty and hunger in all their forms and dimensions and to ensure that all human beings 
can fulfill their potential and dignity and equality in a healthy environment. First off, Christ said specifically that the poor will always be with humanity, right? Mm -hmm. That you cannot end human poverty. The poor you'll always have with you. And several times in the first, the declaration and the preamble in this document, it says we are going to end poverty everywhere forever. Uh, It's just, it is outright utopianism, which is the alchemy you're talking about. Right. And and, and Marx promised that as well. Yes, he did. I mean, Lenin Marxism also said no more poverty. Didn't work. (laughs) No, not quite. Didn't, for people out there, newsflash that um, it didn't it didn't yeah. work really well. I mean, yeah, you're because because I, I spent the I spent spent my evening last night with this, so it, it's it's rubbed off on me some. But I mean, what what's your first impression of this? It's like we, well, I thought I, it, what what jumped out at me was the part about women and girls, because every time you see that, I just think oh, women's reproductive health. The, the reason women and girls are poor is they have ovaries, <laughs> you know, that's what they think. And so the yes. only way we can fix this ovary problem is we need to sterilize people and we need to get prophylactics and we need to get to contraception. And the backup plan is we need abortion clinics, mills. So that's what I think when I hear that. Because, that's right. you know, at, at root, and I think you're going to show us this, Tim, is all of this is going to population control. It's all, these, That's the goal. it's all these darn, disgusting, dirty human beings that are messing up the earth. So let's just reduce the number of human beings. That's right. Listen to what, listen to what the document says in the post-preamble section in the, in the five piece. This is the partnership section that stuck out to me. We are determined to mobilize the means required, which is a military term, to mobilize the means required to implement the, this agenda through a revitalized global port partnership for sustainable development based on a spirit of strengthened global solidarity. Another one of those Catholic social teachings that's being perverted, solidarity. And it's focused in particular on the needs of the poorest and the most vulnerable and with the participation of all countries, all stakeholders and all people. How do you do this, right? You, you get together, you have a meeting and you just say, hey, hey, do you like my, you like my plan for... Uh, for, for evangelization. It's a plan for all countries and all people. I mean, we're supposed to bring the gospel to all nations, and we don't even talk that way, right? Oh, I know, but yeah. How, what's the enforcement mechanism, as we say in constitutional law? Where's the, how do you, and they keep saying no one will be left behind. It's creepy. It's like, look, by 2030, this we are going to be enforcing this. Right. What if Poland, my beloved Poland, doesn't want to play games? They don't want to do it. They're like 2030, 2030 agenda. We don't want to do it. That's right. It, we could have wars over this. People could declare well, war and say, you are not with the UN agenda. We're coming in with tanks and, and jets. It sounds like that's what they're gearing up for. The more you read of this thing, if you, you can go and print off the PDF. Like yeah. I did online, it's called "Transforming Our World: 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development." It's there are military references throughout the opening to this thing. It's not trying to sound overly bellicose. That's not what I mean. But yes, you you have wars over this thing, and and the evidence is the fact that they're saying all stakeholders means all people in all countries everywhere, all of poverty. All, right. They they go in the women's section and they say all. Well, I sh- you know, I'll get to that eventually. But they say all households in the world will be transformed and will share duties, meaning all women should be working. Yep. All, you know, men should go back and make dinner for their working wives. <laughs> it is it is comprehensive in its scope. Yep. Like this is not exaggerating. You read this and it's it's uh, sweeping. They say we resolve between now and 2030 to end poverty and hunger, hunger everywhere. I mean, that's absurd. If you could do this, you would do it. This is outright right. Marxist well, utopianism. I, I got to give him this. They're being more ev- evangelical. They're, they're more into proselytizing than the current Novus Ordo regime in the Catholic Church. Who's not? Yeah, yeah. I mean, exactly. <laughs> I mean, Pope Francis will preach against, you know, the idolatry of capitalism, the idolatry of the West, so on and so forth. 
but does he ever preach against the idolatry of I don't know people who worship idols? Idols, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The people who actually of actual idols who actually yeah. like bow down before idols of Buddha or Shiva or any any of the idols of the current world religions. No, they're cool. They're they're going to heaven apparently, right? Without baptism, right. without conversion, without repenting of the first command over the first commandment, thou shalt know the gods before me. So this is a big problem. Tim, have you ever read, as you were reading this, I started getting thoughts of the communist memoirs of AA-1025. Have you read this book? I have. I have okay. it on my desk. Yeah. So the AA-25 is the story of a, a Polish orphan who gets um, adopted by a family, and he eventually runs away, and he becomes a communist operative and infiltrates the priesthood. Mikolaj. Yeah. Yeah. Mikolaj. But, but one of the interesting things in there, while he's in Rome as a seminarian, he begins plotting how he will rewrite a catechism one day. And one of the right. things that he stresses in there is we have to tell Catholics we should no longer use the word Catholic, which is Greek for universal, because it's, right. a, it's not ecumenical. It offends Eastern Orthodox. It offends Protestants. And so we everywhere we Catholics use the word Catholic, we need to be ecumenical and use the word universal. Right. Which is a Freemasonic communist plot. And he knows it. He's admitting it. And so as you're reading this, I'm thinking, wow, they too want a Catholic church. They want a universal institution Absolutely. that will renew in their image every single household on earth. Exactly. Like God said to Abraham, through you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So the Abrahamic faith, which comes to us fully revealed in Jesus Christ, is to bless every household on earth. But this is a reverse gospel for every domestic family on earth. Universal. I, I, it's universal. It's the gospel of man. The universal right. gospel of man is what it's referred. Yeah, and uh, people, some people out there criticize us when we talk about the connections between communist agents and Masonic agents, there's a lot of evidence. And, and actually, Mary makes reference to it in one of her uh, apparitions we haven't discussed much on the show, that Masonry would be pushed through communism. There's a rumor going around that I believe that Stalin, even though I know communism said bad things about Freemasons, Marx, Stalin, Trotsky, Lenin were all Masons and they, there's pictures of I found pictures of all four of them doing the hidden hand thing. Yeah. So and, and Mary said that that uh, masonry would be pushed through communism. Lots of the goals are the same. The, the, the common enemy is the same and a lot and lots of specific means of effectuation are the same. By the way, when when. After you say what you just said about the Catholicity, lowercase c, of the principles and goals of of masonry. Consider this section of the Declaration. By the way, I don't know how a declaration is distinguishable from a preamble, but this is the section after the preamble. They have like five preambles. They just go by different names. <laughs> this is an agenda of unprecedented scope and significance. It is accepted by all countries and it's applicable to all, taking into account different national realities, capacities, and levels of development. And respecting national policies and priorities. That's like the only lip service they even pay that I found in this to respecting national border and sovereignties. These are universal goals and targets which involve the entire world, developed and developing countries alike. How do you, you can't just start making goals. Okay, me and you on TNT, let's right. let's make some goals and just start saying they involve everyone in the entire world, and by 2030, everyone will implement our goals. You can, that yeah. is the concept of sovereignty, right? right. How do yeah. you force that? That's the well, craziest thing I've ever heard. You force it with force. With force, yeah. yeah there's, there's Tim, no quick question. Uh, 2030, 2030 agenda, how does it relate to Francis and the church? I mean, has the church said, we love this? Yes. Yeah, yeah, what's what, what's what's the Catholic buy-in for the agenda 2030? We probably should have started with that, just so people aren't. Just, oh, who cares what you're doing? Showing the UN, who cares what the UN thinks? Well, you remember you asked about like Laudato Si and the yep. connection, but um, that that I hadn't even put this explicitly together, but Laudato Si is written 
in conjunction months. with uh, yeah. this, yeah, months before, but using the same people. Jeffrey Sachs right. is, is instrumental in the UN. Right. Um, so we have the Catholic um, version, and then we've got the raw UN director's cut. Precisely, precisely. But but no, th- there's no there's no abstraction here. There's this isn't um, connective powers of imagination. Even even the the, the wise imagination. I mean, the the article on Catholic News Agency from March 9th that Padre Peregrino, it, it came down to me with, with, in the form of a critique. He was saying, this is, this is, this is wild. Uh, this article is all about how Francis got the bishops together and said, we're going to implement this. The Catholic Church is going to be key in this. The article, by the way, is entitled, Francis Urges Personal Conversion in Implementing SDGs. So, so there's no abstraction here. I'm not like, oh, look, it's just a, right. a connection that I remember between Laudato Si and these goals. He, he's saying, look, the Catholic Church is about these, and it's it's all about Laudato Si. Yeah, here's the here's a quote. I pulled that CNA article back up. It says. Um, uh, the Pope addressed Vatican officials, religious representatives, and members of international organizations participating in a March 7th through 9th, 2019 conference on religions and sustainable development goals, SDGs. Yeah. Listening to the cry of the earth and the poor. The conference was hosted by the Dicastery for prom- prom- Promotion of Integral Human Development and the Pontifical Council for Interreligious Dialogue. And then in his speech to conference participants Friday, Pope Francis praised the SDGs right, and the 2030 agenda as, quote, a great step forward for global dialogue in the sign of a necessary new universal solidarity. Wow, he put universal and solidarity in the same <laughs> sentence. Right. This is, that, this is scary when you put that. Scary. There. It's he praises the SDGs and he praises oh. the 2030 agenda. So, folks, what Tim is talking about here has received an imprimatur from the Pope. Not just to right. let it be printed, but praising it. This is going to yeah. lead to universal solidarity. Man, I, those two words, that and dialogue. Yeah. Those buzzwords got to go. I just don't they want to dialogue go. with anyone. As but, far as but, I'm concerned, but, you and I are not dialoguing. No, we're monologuing in the same space. (laughs) Monologue, alternating monologues. Yes, we can, we can, we can coin that. It can be the next uh, uh, motto for for TNT, alternating monologues. You know, but the difference is dialogue is silly and always makes me laugh and I mock it. Whereas this, this Masonic stuff, when you're talking about global takeover will be effectual, will be finished by 2030. And the, the new human religion, the new religion of man based entirely on physicalist principles, the principles of evolution, all the stuff we talked about with the Alda Benita, to me, it gets less, vastly less funny and infinitely more just frightening. And, yeah, it's and, not mean, a not, conspiracy theory. It's written in print right here. It's there. Well, go Google George Soros and, and find, you know, you have to dig a, a little bit, but find what he's committed to. It's, it's this. It's this, and it's ba- it's basically what was formerly known as masonry. Now people don't talk about masonry anymore. It went underground, but it's the it's the new universal man, the remaking of mankind, like like you're saying about metallurgy and uh, and uh, alchemy. What do you call it? alchemy? It's well, the remaking of old things new. You know, it's interesting. That Freemasonry went underground, but when you really think about it. It had to be a secret society in the 1700s because they would have been persecuted for saying the, these kind of things. So they were a secret society. They didn't really go underground. They just became the mainstream. I mean, that's that's it. That's Oprah it. on her TV show openly teaches the Freemasonic ideals of rationalism, universal brotherhood, alchemy, Gnosticism, that humans can become God, that humans are God. All that stuff is now in the movies and, you know, daytime TV. Shoot, it's even in the mouth of the Pope. Right. You pop know? music. Pop, pop it's music. It's everywhere. Yeah. It, it literally went mainstream. It, it's everything. Right. That's the, now it hides in plain sight. 
yes. before it it hid a little bit in plain sight. Now it's just out there in plain sight, and right. it's to 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 dole, the dole witted and the slow. It's even harder to see now, even though it's more out in the open. Yeah. Listen to again. I know it's a drum I bang a lot, and I'm not getting secret royalties from Michael O'Brien, but but. His book, his 1997 book, Father Elijah, I, I couldn't, I just think Father Elijah, the first three chapters, when they're, um, they go to basically a UN meeting, all right, uh, Father Elijah does, he's, he's implemented as a kind of spy. He goes to in a meeting just like this, where yep. they're talking about things just like SDGs. They might be called that. I mean, <laughs> right. the book is prophetic. And all I kept writing when I wrote, so here's like the third preamble. I, I'm doing a lot of reading here today, but I, I want you to listen to this. This is like the third preamble. This time it's called Our Vision, but it's 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 pretty rich. I just I kept writing Father Elijah. This is a right. scene from the book. In these goals and targets, we're setting out on a supremely ambitious and transformational vision. We envisage a world free of poverty, hunger, disease, and want where all life can thrive. We envisage a world free of fear and violence, a world with universal literacy, a world with equitable and universal access to quality education at all level, to health care and social protection, where physical, mental, and social well-being are assured. assured. How do you do that, this side of the eschaton? A world where we reaffirm our commitments regarding the human right to safe drinking water and sanitation. It gets kind of boring and quotidian here, where there's improved hygiene, where food is sufficient, safe, affordable, and nutritious, a world where human habitats are safe, resilient, and sustainable, and where there's universal access to affordable, reliant, and sustainable energy. Now listen to this. We envisage a world of universal respect for human rights and human dignity, the rule of law, justice, equality, and non-discrimination, of respect for race, ethnicity, and cultural diversity, no religious, right. even sort of quasi-freemasonic uh, religious equality there, of equal opportunity permitting the full realization of human potential and contributing to shared prosperity, a world which invests in its children and in which every child grows up free from violence and exploitation. I mean, that sounds fine, but how do you enforce this? Right. A world in which every woman and girl enjoys full gender equality, everyone, and all legal, social, and economic barriers to their empowerment have been removed. You know what that this means. Yeah. This so, is, so are they? Is the UN going to step into Saudi Arabia and and take away all burqas? Are they going to impose that and say women can drive or what? I mean, how does that work out? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But remember, when they mean when they when they talk about religious, when the left talks about religious right. uh, uh, oppression of women, they are not talking about the burkas. religion that truly oppresses right. women with bur burkas and the like. They're talking about Christianity. Yeah, they're, they're talking about sexual mores. The people who say you can't restrain the ovaries, those are the bad people. Yeah, the traditional Catholic. Yeah. It's 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 partly unsatisfying because uh, to to sit there here and read this to everyone because it's got like five preambles right <laughs> and each one is laced with a couple ping sentences where you're like yeah. whoa that hit me right in the fillings you know yeah, like yeah. like a little zap of lightning and so when you read all I can't read the whole thing but I have you can see there's there's one or two creepy sentences like per per preamble and so it's 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 well, you know, what hit, it's absurd. what hit me, Tim, as you're reading that, you know, what institution for the past 2000 years set up schools in the villages of France and Africa and America to teach kids how to read and to educate kids, the Catholic Church, which institution set up 100 percent of the universities, the Catholic Church, which institution set up originally 100 percent of the hospitals? The Catholic Church. Libraries. Right? Yes. The Catholic, the Catholic Church. Church. So historically, there was a universal, I'm going to use the word Catholic, brotherhood of shared resources based on alms and charity, inspired by grace, that right. was trying to embrace and incorporate the entire world in, in and under the mantle of Holy Mother Church. It was yes. led by the Pope. That was the mechanism of grace, renewal, dignity, and salvation. 
Now the Pope is saying, well, I know we used to do all that, but I'm going to let you people who are atheists and non-believers do all that. And we're just going to kind of have our pom-poms on the sidelines and be like, go you in, go you in. That's shameful. Right. We, we Catholics should be embarrassed that we are turning to the UN and, be, and saying, why don't you guys be the Catholic Church? Right. Two important differences. The, I mean, the Catholic Church built Europe, which built the world. Sorry. Yeah. Like you heard it yeah. here first. Oh, why is history Eurocentric? Because history because is Eurocentric. It is. Yeah, because, because it's it Eurocentric. Because yeah. we, we call it the West, and we, right. we, we say, okay— the church built Europe, which built the West, and you know we that we're only claiming half the world, but but the West is what built the modern world. Right. It not not modernist world, but just the world yeah. as we know it. All all the niceties come from Christianity, which built Europe. Yeah. And see, before when it was the Catholic Church doing all this building civilization, it was a supernatural take. Supernatural telos yep. that was not to be enforced, but at the point of a sword like Islam, but but preached and offered up to the free will of man to accept or not accept. Oh, you like all these good things? They're ultimately ordered to the common good, and it's it's ultimately Jesus behind all this. Yep. So so come on in if you want. Now yep. so where is there's it, a crucifix not, over every door of all these services and goods that you received? Yes. So, precisely, precisely, and that's that's the telos that I was talking about, the goal, the end goal. But it was supernatural and non-compulsory. This is a natu- a new natural religion that is going to be compulsory. I mean, I just don't. You can't. Here's preamble five. Let me read this. I mean, this one's called the new agenda. I mean, they just. <laughs> I skipped preambles. You three think and it's four. there's a bunch of committees and they each wrote one. They're like, okay, everybody gets a trophy. Everybody gets their preamble in. We'll yeah, just rename yeah. them. <laughs> they're a bunch of socialists, so yeah. they're not going to pick the best one. They're like all of ours. We all get participation. Everybody's trophies. preamble's awesome. Yeah, we all make the cut. Yeah, yeah. No, it is. Um, we are announcing these 17 SDGs, which which we'll get to, with 169 associated targets. These, you know, you know, a camel is a horse made by committee, as as Twain used to say, uh, which are integrated and indivisible. Blah blah blah. Never before have world leaders pledged common action and endeavor across such a broad and universal policy agenda. I I agree. I mean, I don't I don't disagree with that. That's the creepy part. We are setting out together on the path towards sustainable development, devoting ourselves collectively to the pursuit of global development and of win-win cooperation. There's the Michael Scott, Michael Scott papacy. This is Michael Scott government saying win-win, which has which can bring huge gains to all countries in all parts of the world. They talk a little bit more and then listen to this. In doing so, we reaffirm our commitment to international law. That's the enforcement clause and emphasize that the agenda is to be implemented in a manner that is consistent with the rights and obligations of states under international law. Wow. That's horrible. We can't appeal to our own laws anymore. No. Sovereignty is dead, which Thomas Aquinas, remember, says national sovereignty is where the, the will of God is, is on earth is vested. Yeah. International. It's, it is, I mean, I, I'd show you what I wrote here with exclamation. I mean, points, a Catholic it, would have written G-rated. in conformity with natural law. That would have been the uni- universal principle, not an sure. international positive law, which is what they're setting sure. forward. So that, that would be, I like playing the difference here of what, you know, a real Catholic would say, and then what this Freemasonic document says, right? So they're yeah. saying, hey, you don't like this? tough we're bringing international law to bear against you right not natural law yeah. anything but <laughs> right, yeah. yeah natural law is like you said non-positive and in that sense non-enforceable right? right in the fact that it's not a human positive law natural law is the higher international law but it's not it's not a it's not a positive law right. meaning that governments aren't responsible for enforcing its provisions you just hope they do it yeah right right they're, I mean, morally, they're morally they're, they're responsible. Accountable. Right. They're morally responsible. They're not accountable yes. uh, uh, in in history, within history. Right. There's not like a, a council of overseers right. of natural law who are holding a scepter or something. There's nothing like that. No, well, I guess you theorems. could I guess you could say in a way the Pope 
as the protector of doctrine and morals in a way he enforced natural law on nations. So if Henry, right. Henry VIII says, hey, I'm going to get some more wives, he says, no, you're not. But even under, you know, no very little separation of church and state, the Holy Roman Empire, think of Charlemagne being coronated in the year 800, AD 800, there's still a pope and a Holy Roman emperor. They still have right. separate, conceptually distinguishable Yes. views even in the left's worst nightmare a holy roman empire right <laughs> there's still there's still there's still you can direct the church from the state even when it's more sure. um, integrated yeah they're distinct they're integrated but distinct right yeah but not divided but, but not divided right right yeah precisely so i mean look you you called it earlier i mean the, the there's another discrete goal to to all the feminism besides just abortion and population control, but it is the most uh, relevant end that they have in mind is the abortion and population control, which is what they want to do. Um, so listen to what they say about feminism here. This is the last bit from any of the like half dozen preambles I'll read. They, they say something hilarious about s sport, as Europeans call sports. Um, <laughs> Realizing gender equality and the empowerment of women and girls will make a crucial contribution to progress across all the goals and targets, all of them. The achievement of full human potential, utopianism, and it's, I mean, think of that in the context of Aristotle, right. you, you know, who, right. who's pure act, right. who, who can, only, who can exist with God. no potency, yeah. only God is pure act, it can, can uh, achieve full potential, perfect efficiency. The achievement of full potential and sustainable development is not possible if one half of humanity continues to be denied its full human rights and opportunities. The West, first world countries aren't denying women rights and opportunities. Women and girls must enjoy equal access to quality education, economic resources, and political participation, as well as equal opportunities with men and boys for employment, leadership, decision-making at all levels. They go on to talk about, and this is something that I'm, I'm screaming at the TV when I watch the NBA, and they, they put on their politically charged garbage WNBA commercials. They have a, a, a paragraph called sport. Sport is also an important enabler of sustainable development. We recognize the growing contribution of sport to the realization of development and peace and the promotion of tolerance and respect and the contributions it makes to the empowerment of women and young people, individuals, and communities as well to health, education, and social inclusion objectives. These are the social engineers. I don't know how else to say it. Right. It's it's as creepy as 1984. Yeah. It's worse. It's real. You can't write this stuff. Well, they did write it. Right. They wrote they wrote it in six or seven preambles. But but y y I couldn't write this stuff. I would think that I'm being hyperbolic if I said this is what they're they would draw something up like this. Yeah. Yeah, the great irony is uh, in America, so much of the scholarship system is is tied up in women in sport. I mean, that's how they accomplished it. You know, that's true of having everything co-ed and, and co-equal. It's true. It's through the sporting uh, rules and regulation for government funding. Um, but that's kind of now getting. If you read these, you know, if you read Drudge Report, there's all there's constantly new and in new and newer articles on trans person wins gold medal in high school track meet trans wins first place in wrestling match and it's, it's kind beautiful of, it's kind it's of hilarious their agenda is undermining itself itself yeah they're saying well we want women that. to have their own sports but we're gonna allow men to identify as women and go and dominate the entire <laughs> field of that sport but we can't say anything against it because then we'd undermine our trans agenda it's so right. dumb. it's so dumb the left is always getting itself into self-contradiction particularly with everything but with feminism i mean think about yeah feminism in sports transgenderism in sports there is a terminus there yeah um think of yeah. feminism which they hold up with with islam there's a terminus there yeah. you can't take that any further you have to pick one over the other yeah, and they're eventually just like, just i want out yeah. I want out. Tap out. They want out of that or, debate. Or Bruce Jenner wins Woman of the Year. There's right. a lot of feminists who didn't like that. That's right. 
I but, forgot about that. But he did. So I, I'm curious on the 17 SDGs. Yeah, I got them right here. Uh, okay, good. Are you going to run through them? Is that a question? Yeah. Okay, go go there, and then if it doesn't cover it, I'll ask it later. Go ahead. All right. So, again, these people like – they're not wordsmiths, but they like words. So it's not like – I wish it was like SDG1 food. We're right. going to eat or right. whatever. Like it's – they're kind of like – to go on, end poverty in all forms everywhere. Aside from being universalist, this is just hilarious sounding, right? It sounds like a do-gooder club by a bunch right. of seven-year-olds. Right. Goal two, end hunger, achieve food security and improve nutrition and promote sustainable ag- agriculture. Goal three, ensure healthy lives and promote well-being at all ages. That sounds dynamite. Goal four, ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. Some of this is just fruity sounding, you know, lifelong, right. le- like what, like libraries? That's a lifelong <laughs> learning opportunity. <laughs> Goal five, I started this one, achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls. Uh, well, no, what does that six, mean? What does that mean? Right. What does that yeah. mean? Yeah. Well, I, we know, yeah, but they don't. They don't flesh it. Well, and then there's a section where they flesh it out a bit. I have some highlighting. And here's there. another question: What about boys? Yeah, I mean, I mean what, what is what it? About us? I mean, isn't that exclusive? Like, don't right. boys get to flourish, or are we just assuming that every boy on earth is flourishing? They are currently. You okay. didn't know that? Okay. Yeah. Every boy is rich and successful and handsome, right? And uh, has lots of girls wanting to date him, right? Yes. All the ladies like him, and he can. And every guy, even little, short, you know, four foot six, uh, grown men, can dunk on a ten foot rim. Yep. It's like it's, it's not nature. They can't. Yeah, obviously. Uh, goal six: ensure availability and sustainable management of water and sanitation. Some of them are really boring in a just typical UN way. Goal seven: ensure access to affordable, reliable, sustainable, modern energy for all. I think energy's always, you know. The same thing. I don't know what modern energy is. It's it's all electrons, right? Uh, goal eight: promote sustained, inclusive, and sustainable. They have sustained and sustainable. I guess that makes sense. Economic growth, full and productive employment, and decent work for all. What's decent work? I don't know. What if no I one? I wants... clean my toilet sometimes. Sorry, I mean my, my yeah yeah. Old, we, I'll, I'll, I'll jump in and I'll, I'll help out with the chores on some Saturdays. I'll volunteer. And sometimes, you know what? I wind up cleaning toilets. That seems like the UN's going to have a problem with that. You know, the, the worst job that I hate most is, is uh, when you have boys that are boys and you have to take off the toilet seat and you have to reach in there and unscrew the toilet seat from there. But there's all kinds of missed uh, yeah. rim shots of the boys peeing into that toilet. It's really gross. <laughs> I don't want to. It's indecent. I don't want to do that anymore. Someone in the UN needs to take care of that that problem for me. I don't like that. Well, they say in here, right here in SDGA, you need decent work for all. You're part of all. Yeah. So no one is allowed to clean toilets anymore. Right. From 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 sloppy uh, uh, excretion. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Or take out the. Who's going to remove the trash from our homes? Seriously, indecent. Yeah. Indecent. Outright indecent. Uh, I agree. Goal nine, build resilient infrastructure. I mean, does that mean like a, a bridge that bounces? What is resilient <laughs> infrastructure? Like the bridge falls to the ground and it bounces back up? What the hell? Promote inclusive and sustainable industrialization and foster innovation. Sounds fun. Goal 10, this one I have starred. Reduce inequality within and among countries. So this isn't just uh, within socialism. the culture. With- Global socialism. Is goal eleven also have it started? Make cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable. What? Who calls it a settlement? You know that that's the other thing liberals are. Well, I they think like, I think that's referring to migration. That I that you were. I mean, right. San Francisco right. was a settlement in the eighteen hundreds. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> right. So a it settlement is when funny. you're yeah. you're bringing in people to settle. Yeah, to settle them. Yeah, yeah. They they settle down. We used right. to say that. That's what getting married was. Right. Uh, no, that's true. I, I guess you're right. I was like, what the? What is this? Goal twelve: ensure sustainable consumption and production patterns. This is where you get the 
right. population control. Goal 13, take urgent action to urgent action. Now, all this is urgent, right? If yeah. you're going to do some the sweeping goals by 2030, it's all urgent. Yeah, you got to hurry up. Last time, time I checked, money, it's baby. 2019. Yeah, right. You're 11 so, years so out. The, yeah, you, yeah, we, we got 11 years to do like everything to, to make, you know, <laughs> athletic shoes smell good after the game and change right. Pepsi to Coke and do all this stuff. It's like we got 11 years. Time is money. People, let's go. But they still say urgent action because, you know, this is the heart of it to combat climate change and its impacts. Asterisk. And then it says acknowledging that the U.N. Framework Convention on Climate Change is the primary international intergovernmental forum for negotiating the global response to climate change. So th this is where they get really right. impassioned. You know, they take off their shoe and they bang it on the podium here, as, as you yeah. all know. Um, urgent action. The rest of it's secondary urgency, obviously. G uh, goal 14. Conserve. And also, oh, let me interrupt here. You, all, you, I like also how they've gone to climate change because you pointed out in a previous show it used to be global cooling and then it's global warming and now there's some evidence that maybe it's not global warming. So, like, well, crap. Let's just say climate change. That's right. Right. That covers without missing a beat. Yeah. There's <laughs> no. There's no. Because I was saying, well, is the world getting too hot? If we turn off twenty percent of our factories, will it now cool back down? They don't know any of this. No. Yeah. There is no. There is no causal relation of what's going on in our atmosphere. Obviously, pollution is bad for the world. Air pollution is bad. You go to some look at some of these South American countries with the haze over them. It's disgusting. That's bad. But we don't really know what the temperature of the Earth is going to be 30 years from now based on our production. So they just right. say uh, climate change. Well, a big part of this reaffirms the Kyoto Accords where they, they exempted the two biggest polluters in the, the world, China and India, because they're developing. Yeah. So they get they get to keep yeah. you know Disgusting. taking a dump on the the, on the, the world the beloved environment. <laughs> on yeah, the world. The world. <laughs> All right. I, yeah. And we no, in America, which is one of the cleanest countries, we have to pay these pay part of our tax money to to clean up the dump. Right. Thanks. Which which is fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we get to clean the toilets. Yeah, <laughs> even though it's indecent, yeah, demonstrably indecent. But yeah, um, protect, restore, and promote sustainable use of terrestrial ecosystems. It gets really boring when they start talking like environmentalists. Sustainably manage forests, combat combat de desertification, and halt and res reverse land degradation and halt biodiversity loss. I used a blue highlighter. Don't don't do that, people. Uh, because that's why I'm that's why I'm struggling a little to read goal 16 promote peaceful and inclusive societies for sustainable development provide access to justice for all sounds pretty good yeah. and build effective accountable and inclusive institutions at all levels i mean that's just saying anything you well, everything's an institution right, right. this show is an institution right. it's got to be inclusive at all levels yeah. and finally goal and 17, sustainable it, it needs everything to be sustainable. has to be sustainable what does that it mean does. yeah it's like well, we can keep it going. We can keep, uh, yeah. Is if you go to a school, the uh, the the new St. Thomas Institute is it sustainable? I think I it's sustainable. So. Yeah, you're sustaining it, so I guess so. Yeah, so I like, guess it's in conformity to the 2030 agenda. Whew. That's good. Okay, <laughs> I was worried. Uh, I know I don't know what that that means in context. People will be writing oh, this is what the word means, but yeah, I don't know. It's just, well, they, and in many places they say sustained and sustainable, like it's really punchy. It's like right. okay, like cool. Yeah, someone got a master's in human rights and learned that. That's right. Someone went to the the uh, uh, what is it? The Kennedy School of well, you know what's whatever. offensive, Tim? I, I'm oh, I got this CNA article. There's an ad being shown to me. It says, sorry, this is kind of on target, but but not new master of arts and human rights scholarships available for 2019 apply today. The Institute for human ecology offered by the Catholic university of America. It's CUA. Really? CUA is offering a new masters of arts in human rights at the wow. Institute of human ecology. Wow. Yeah. Like, I thought I knew what human. I mean, what is it? Just life, liberty, property? They're like, here's here's the Webster's definition of each of these three things. And then you get here's a master's. master's degree. Yeah. How, <laughs> how do you study that? I what don't is know. that? I don't know, and, but 
obviously the keywords for this article on the SDGs, right, and the 2030 agenda matched up with the keywords for this ad from Catholic University of America. That's right. The Institute of Human Ecology. New <laughs> Masters of Arts in Human Rights. People, don't go get a Masters of Arts in Human Rights. There's no jobs for that other than at the UN, and you're just going to go into debt. It's not smart. No. No. But you, it's but, not sustainable. It's, not, that, it's it, not sustainable unless you get hired by the UN to write five preambles to right. a document that the Pope endorses. Right. Even then, I'm not sure that's sustainable. <laughs> no. Well, it is if it's if it's enforced bankrolling by all the countries of the world. But yeah, it's it's it becomes a sustainable career if you're the the uh, alternate preamble writer for the U.S. the right. U.N. Declaration of of uh, Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, finally, the the seventeenth is strengthen the means of implementation and revitalize the global partnership for sustainable development. So goal seventeen <laughs> is just stre- strengthen the body, which just wrote all this stuff, and also serve them delicious nacho snacks every right. three hours or whatever. I mean, it's funny that they're like, this is the important one. Gluten-free nachos. Gluten, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Vegetarian. Yeah. Vegan. Listen to- vegan. Sorry. We're using the word vegan. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Vegans wouldn't be offended if you don't call them vegans. So call them vegans. Goal five is to achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls. Yeah, it, it's got it's got this is where you, you get into the yep. the um, the implications and it 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 uh, it fish hooks other documents that the UN's already produced. But they'll have an asterisk and they'll say, see this. And that's where you get the abortion, the homo rights and the. Well, what was the other one? Contraception yeah. for all and all that. Um, but so it's it's end all forms of discrimination against all women and girls everywhere. I mean, it sounds right. like it's written by a six year old. A it also a presumes year. that they're all being oppressed. It does. Yeah, that's well, the problem. Explicitly. Yeah, it explicitly half the human like race, half the human race, is being in need of Marxism. That's yeah. what Marxism is: is eternal revolution, right. a revolution that just keeps going. You, you know, we have race problems. Well, well, we did. You know, when we when the United States existed under British slavery that the Brits right. set up for us, American principle, natural law principles ended slavery. slavery. And then there was segregation. We ended segregation. And now it's it's all it's all sorted out. But they, they keep it going. They, they restoke right. the fire of, of race tension right. because they need eternal revolution. Yeah, Same I mean, you, you could be women. You could be out at night. Black man. Going to Subway, getting a sandwich, 2 a.m. You get jumped by dudes wearing MAGA hats, you know, MAGA Nation, throw acid on you or bleach on you. Right. Except right. it did never really happen. But he has, to, he has to keep the paid. revolution going. Yeah, he paid the guys to do that to him. Keep the revolution going. It, you, you constantly have to have microaggressions. Right, right. And they're teaching this in, in the university now. That's what smart people study, bro. Yeah, is so they get their masters in, get lots of yeah. debt, and then they say, "Well, I, the the nation should pay for my debts and my human rights masters or my feminist studies masters or whatever." Nothing else is even sustainable. even if I'm going to be able, even if you went and you spent and you got um, your masters in Aristotle, which I love, but if you can't, if that's not sustainable for you, it was a mistake. So right. here, this is this is yes yes, sorry. Go ahead. No, that's all I gotta say. Just had a news flash. What's not sustainable is human life. So so uh, Cardinal <laughs> Got- Gottfried Daniels has died. For real? Not, just now? For real? Yeah yeah yeah. Just now. Well, may he rest in peace. News flash. Yeah. Hopefully he. For those who haven't watched our ahead. dozens and dozens of videos, Cardinal Daniels is the. Uh, well, he's not the mastermind because Cardinal Martini was the mastermind, but he was a leader of the St. Gallen Mafia who got Bergoglio elected. He's the one who revealed that there was a St. Right. Gallen group, and he called it Mafia. We didn't make up that term, St. Right. Gallen. Um, so, wow. Yeah, so that that just happened right now. Uh, yeah, you know, the only thing that's – the only man that ever – live that's uh self-sustainable is is christ you gotta you gotta come to christ that's and right ho- hopefully uh daniel's repented of his 
his many public sins and, and got square with the Lord. Um, yeah, I just wanted to, to, um, to point out this really creepy sentence here in achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls. What do you think this means? Listen to this. Eliminate all harmful practices such as child, early, and forced marriage and female genital mutilation. Obviously, that's that's bad. That's Islam. I'm surprised they even mentioned it. But Don't listen, Methodists say, do that too? Don't Methodists have female genital mutilation? Oh, no, that's not Methodists. I thought no. that was – maybe Methodists did that. Unitarians? Oh, no. no. It's pretty much just Muslims, right? Yeah, not yeah. even oh, the yeah. Unitarians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Not even yeah. them. Um, um, such as, but, but listen to this. There, there's a subtlety here. If it, eliminate all harmful, and I mean religious practices for women, right. such as child, early, and forced marriage. I've talked about this before. Right. What if you say? I mean, if if you're cross-defining early marriage as child marriage, which I do, then oh, yeah, oh, I whatever. don't. I don't want What's early. You know, Muhammad married a nine-year-old. I don't want mm-hmm. that to happen. I'm against that. Me too. Right, but. If a girl gets married at 18 and she, you know, her parents vetted the guy and uh, she made a responsible decision, I think it's awesome. Yeah. Praise be. Well, I mean, that's what's well, a vocation, right? Yeah. She's coming to her vocation. But but that's what they mean by early marriage. And we've right. talked about this on right. the show. No, they, they mean pre 30 year old girls, is what they yeah. mean. No that girl, I mean. if you talk to anyone at Cosmo or New York Times or anybody in that world, Marriage before 30 is a bad idea for a girl. A lot of Protestant do conservative it. dads are saying that now. Uh, I, mm, I, I know this. My time in Protestantism, they like their daughters getting married young. Well, I'm speaking from, yeah, I can't go into detail. Well, Protestants yeah, are Protestants. They got their spectrums. But se- se- so conservatism in America is changing now. Where, right. um, it, when we think of American graffiti or something or Paul and Paula, Hey, hey, Paula, I want to marry you. I'm waiting for school to be through. That we, we associate with the 1950s and the 1940s and, uh, and conservative American waspish ways of thinking. That's done. I mean, I have had encounters with all sorts of people that would surprise you that are conservatives that say no marriage, literally, as a rule, no marriage before 30 for my daughter. And, and That's uh, crazy. You know, these, it's crazy. It's either everyone is a super saint and will be continent from age 12 to 30 and never have any sexual encounters, or you introduce contraception. That's what it is. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. then, because otherwise you would, you would have, you know, one to five kids by the time you're 30. Right. Which yeah. they don't want. That's Which that's... they don't want. Yeah. So you have to either just have really virtuous continent people who have a a vocation of celibacy till the age of 30 which everyone should be chaste right but it's of course but one of the reasons in traditional catholicism for marriage is you know like paul said it's better to marry than to burn it's hard to sustain over time an entire right. population of boys and girls who never have any uh any sexual encounters till they're 30 we, we recognize also, concupiscence. So we say get married. Absolutely. But also here's – so we're not just assuming the worst in the people that talk like this. Avoid early marriage, which means anything before whatever. You can tell by what they're not preaching. I mean I, many of the encounters I've had with parents of young, young women, uh, you know, 18, 19, 20-year-old women that are like, oh, marriage is a decade off, sir. Yeah, I mean, they'll, they'll say stuff like this. It's like, so you just want to, oh, yeah, yeah, date around, have, you know, yeah, I want them to live their life, travel, date around. It's like, well, so are you preaching as you date around, which is very dangerous for a young woman to be traveling around the world alone, you right. know, and, and all that. I mean, to say nothing of these cultural aspects, are you preaching celibacy, celibacy, celibacy? And there, there's, there, no, no. It's, right. it's presumed when you say wink, have wink. fun, date around, it's wink, wink. Yeah. And they're not ever saying it. And, and obviously the UN means this because it wants safe and affordable health care, uh, uh, sexual and reproductive health and reproductive rights. Right. Uh, sexual health means contraception. Reproductive health and reproductive rights means abortion. abortion. On demand around the world. Remember, right. I forget that, that uh, 
admirable young African woman that keeps saying she's been on Fox News a lot lately. She's, she's yes. gone on EWTN. Yes. She says, we don't want it. We see your problems. We have our own right. problems, not right. in the West. W- women in our country do not have that problem. Right. And, uh, you know, got a hundred problems. This ain't one of them. Yeah. Uh, you know, I got ab- nine, nine problems and abortion ain't one. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, I always add the one, but <laughs> the reproductive rights is the right to kill this anti-right. Right. The, the, um, that's what they mean. So it's, it's rather explicit. Uh, I mean, it's just more of the same. And, and the, the, there's a lot you could say. Yep. I, I don't think, uh, I think people get the flavor for this document in a way that's that's sufficiently specific. It's you know what seems to be lacking, unless there's a section in there that you didn't read and I just missed it. There is no section in there of we need to foster healthy marriages and families. Anything in there on that? No, of course not. Yeah, right. Of course not. No. I mean, the traditional Catholic world, even the tr- traditional human outlook would be you know, the family is the is the cellular unit of civilization. Right. So goes the family. So goes the culture. And uh, if we have divorce and we have contraception and we have abortion and we have women not marrying to the 30, uh, you are not going to have strong families. It's possible. No. And let's think about it, too. This is controversial. People might get mad. Leave us a comment. Uh Oh, they will. Women, women, men have a have a wider window of fertility. Women have a smaller window of fertility. You know, from age fifteen to sixteen to maybe a little bit earlier, but to forty, that's the window. You know, and and if you move to New York at age twenty two and spend those next eight eight years doing sex in the city and dating cute guys and you know, buying stilettos and walking around with Chanel bags, uh, there may not be too much left for you once you creep into your early 30s, you know? Like well, it, Gavin it, it, McGinnis says New York City is the elephant graveyard for ovaries. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, it, it's like 15 to 40 with diminishing returns that steeply right. drop off after like 22 in, in terms of female. Yeah, and I think Look after 33, charts. it really is, is getting low. It gets logarithmic. It's log. Yes. I mean, you could go, I mean, don't take my word for it. Go look it up. Female yeah. fertility yeah. chart by age. It's sorry. I mean, I'm just, we can now, as, as the, uh, have the SDGs been enforced yet? Or is that still closer <laughs> to 20, 30 where I'll get locked up for saying this? It might be early, but it's a fact of biology, of anatomy and physiology, folks. It's highest at like 16 or 17 for for girls. Um, That might be early marriage. The UN might disapprove of the Virgin Mary. I I suspect it does in several ways, but but this is just human biology. I pulled the graph, and I'm going to put it on the screen. I pulled the graph. Nice. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah, definitely from 15 to 20 is your best window, yeah. it looks like. That's what I'm saying. It's, yeah. not even like 20, <laughs> right. it's not even 25. We had our first kid at old, like 25, 26 for Steph. Um, that's no 26, 27. That's old. That's, that's, you're in the logarithm. I mean, you're, you're, you're in the yeah. slide. You're yeah. in free fall. It's, it's young. And that's just, sorry. Yeah, shoots sorry and people. ladders, you're on the, la- you're on the shoots. At that point, yeah, you're yeah. on the shoot. Yeah, Joy was yeah. 22 when she was first pregnant. Yeah, you see, you guys, you guys uh, got started earlier. Yep. Now, now that's why we're. And then her second pregnancy was up. her second pregnancy was twins. Y'all had twins too. Yeah, that, that caught us up a little. But yeah, we started started late, 26. So I kind of think yeah, that I mean, maybe God's like, okay, there's not enough people having kids, so some of these couples, I'm just gonna start doing twofers. Right. You know, got to keep right. keep things going in the world. That's what I'm thinking. Right. Yeah, the people that 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 want it. Yeah, we'll give them some it. twofers, twin yep. twin action. It's stressful and it's hard. I don't remember that year too well. Neither does Joy. I'm sure you're all the same way, right? It's hard. The year after twins. twins. twins the the first year is hard. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's beautiful, beautiful, and and caught us up, and and we 
they're amazing. But I mean, I did my best. I mean, the document is this thick, like all leftists right. are, are, are uh, neologists and they love things. I mean, look at that. Look at that. So I, I did my best here to give you guys a, a feel for this thing. And, uh, you know, it's it's garbage, but it's pr- it's exceedingly dangerous garbage. That's 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 all. That's how I conclude. That's how I sum up. Yeah. It's exceedingly dangerous. And they're, they they and mean it. It's they're exceedingly praised by the Bishop of Rome. And he wrote his first encyclical in office, his first full encyclical uh, it, it, on the chair about right. it for this meeting in, in 2015, basically. On the chair, but not ex cathedra. No, no, no. I don't yeah. want people to think, oh, Laudato not, sees ex cathedra. No. Not from the chair, but yeah, I just mean yeah. from the throne. Yeah. Yeah. So there it is. There it is. Whoop, there it is. All right. So take homes. Obviously, we're not going to support this. Uh, this is not Catholic. I don't understand what the Pope is doing endorsing these things. We need to get back to I our. Do. <laughs> to our traditional understanding of the family and of the church as the universal, wait, not universal, Catholic mechanism to bringing about good in the world. And the highest good is orienting orienting every man and woman, boy and girl, to the beatific vision. That's what we are created for, to know, love, and serve God. Every person, whether you're born in China, whether you're born in Saudi Arabia, whether you're born in the Sudan, whether you're born in Argentina, every single one of us was made for that final end, the beatific vision. To become, right. as Thomas Aquinas says, deiform, in the form of God. Not that we become God, but united to the divine essence through the hypostatic union of Jesus Christ. How do you do that? You believe, you hope, you love, you receive the sacraments, you stay in a state of grace, and you fight. And you fight with the rosary. Like and subscribe this to this channel. Share it with your friends. Share it on Facebook. Let people know about this stuff. Happy birthday to Tim Gordon. Happy birthday. We're filming this on his birthday. birthday. Am I sustainable? I'm 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 you are if you get into the beatific vision. That's right. That's otherwise, right. Pope Francis says that you are snuffed out and you'll cease right. to exist. So that's good. You want to be sustainable in the beatific Annihilation vision. Annihilationism. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. So, yeah, that's that. God bless everyone. Till next time, we're out.